This is the Red Dragon K552 Kumara. And in today's video, we are going to be finding out if it's still worth it to buy this keyboard in 2022 as your very first mechanical keyboard. Let's get started. Now let's say you're a person who needs to type a lot. You may be a writer, you may be a content creator, or you may be a coder like me who needs to type a lot of code in order to feed his family. So we need a keyboard that helps us write really, really fast and at the same time reduce our finger fatigue that we get while typing on conventional membrane keyboards that are found in most of the laptops. The mechanical keyboards are actually the industry standards in this scenario that offers us great feel and feedback while typing and at the same time providing better ergonomics suited for long typing sessions. Now six months back I wanted to buy my very first mechanical keyboard and my number one priority was that the keyboard must have red linear switches. If you don't know already, there are three main types of keyboard switches that are widely popular among the mechanical keyboard market. These are the blues, the reds and the browns. The blue switches are the ones which are tactile and clicky, which have this audible clicky sound when pressed, and these are the ones that you'll find on most of the budget mechanical keyboards. The red switches are linear and they don't have any sound whatsoever, and they also do not provide that kind of a feedback. And the browns can be considered as the middle ground between the first two, which offer feedback while at the same time not producing that audible click sound. Now obviously there are a lot more types of switches that are available in the market these days and you can watch this particular video right over here to get an idea of what kind of switch suits you the most so that you can have them in your mechanical keyboards. Alright, now let's come back to our main video topic. So like I was telling you guys, I wanted to buy a mechanical keyboard that had red linear switches and I was also having a strict budget of 2000 Indian rupees or around 25 US dollars. So my two options were the Cosmic Byte CB GK18 Firefly that most of you are aware of and the Red Dragon K552 Kumara. And that also the rainbow version, not the RGB version, because that costed 1000 rupees more. So after doing a lot of R&D from my side and watching a lot of YouTube reviews regarding the K552, I finally settled with the K552 rainbow. Also, since I'm using this keyboard for around 7 months right now, you can consider this as a long-term review of the K552 and that should help you decide how this keyboard holds up after almost a year's worth of use. So that should help you decide whether to buy this keyboard or not in 2022. So the very first thing that I noticed when I received this keyboard is the fact that this thing is heavy. And considering its price point, it's actually built like a tank because you're getting a keyboard that weighs close to a kilo. And that's because the keys are all laid out on this thick metal plate over the PCB that provides a lot of sturdiness to the build. The sides, however, are made out of plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap in any way. It does give you a feeling of robustness, and since the keys are placed lower than the sides, you don't have to worry about things like dust buildup on the switches or on the keyboard. Oh, and did I mention the fact that this keyboard is also spill-proof? That's right, you can spill your drinks or water on your keyboard and it won't matter that much as long as it's accidental and it's not intentional. So I hope you get my point. The K552 is a TKL or 10 keyless keyboard, meaning you don't have the numpad to the right of the keyboard and this provides ample space to keep your mouse for example and gamers will appreciate this a lot, especially while playing FPS titles. Me personally, I did not want to lose out on a lot of keys like what you get with 60 to 65% keyboards and that's why I chose a TKL mechanical keyboard as my first mechanical keyboard. However, if you're someone who does a lot of data entry or someone who cannot live without the numpad, then this is not the keyboard for you. Please keep that in mind. Also, just as a side note, the K552 is wired only, which means that you have a non-detachable, non-braided USB cable to connect to your computer, and that is the one and only way of using this keyboard. The wire is thick though, and doesn't feel like snapping off, and the USB connector is quite big with gold plating, which makes it quite good in this price point. If ergonomics is what concerns you, I'd say that the K552 is quite good in this aspect. As you can see right here, the keycaps are laid out in this curved manner, and this is ideal for long typing sessions without the need of a wrist rest. Although I do like to keep my keyboard raised a bit by using the standoffs right here, speaking of which, they have these rubberized feet, preventing slipping on the desk while you're using your keyboard. Now the K552 that I have with me is the rainbow version which comes with Otemu red switches, and it does not have per key RGB. Each row as you can see right here has its own color, and that's about it, you can't change it. You can, however, change the modes of lighting with these funky inbuilt effects, 
although I did not find this to be so much appealing. Now I badly wanted RGB, like come on, who doesn't? But the version of K552 that comes with the per key RGB, at least the one that's being sold here in India, that one comes with blue switches only. And since I did mention the fact that having red linear switches with this keyboard was my top priority, I didn't want to sacrifice my experience with a keyboard that has RGB and that's why I went with the rainbow version of the K552. Now I get it, most of you are already quite familiar with the fact that the K552 is hot swappable, meaning you can pull out the switches anytime and replace them with whichever type of switches that you want. And you might think to yourself, well, why didn't I go with the blue switches version and then change over to the reds? And the simple answer to that is the cost involved, like buying a keyboard first and then buying another set of switches if I had a better budget then I would have gone for a different keyboard altogether. Alright, now talking about the switches, the K552 comes with Otemu red switches that are kind of Cherry MX red knockoffs. But for a person like me who just got his hands on his first mechanical keyboard, this did not make quite a difference. These switches have a very low actuation force making it ideal for typing and gaming. And if you see closely, since these switches have a kind of added support to them, it greatly reduces the keycap wobbling giving the K552 a more premium feel during typing. Now the K552 does come with N key rollover and anti-ghosting which means that you can press almost all the keys at once and they will be detected by your computer. This makes it a good keyboard for typing fast, like really fast and gamers will rejoice since these two terms that I mentioned are absolutely crucial for a good gaming experience. Ok so coming to the keycaps used in the K552, these are not double shot PBT keycaps like you get in most of the other expensive keyboards and these are in fact made out of a material called the ABS plastic which are cheaper to produce. However, the keycaps are quite thick and they do have a matte kind of grainy texture that helps a lot in preventing your fingers from sliding around as you type on your keyboard. And these also did not develop any shine on them which most keycaps develop after prolonged periods of use so a big thumbs up from my side. Now if you talk about the fonts, yeah, not a huge fan of these. These are like true gamer fonts, quite intense to be honest. Although you can easily get rid of these by using different keycaps from another brand. Now I'd suggest going with pudding style keycaps if you really want to take advantage of the lighting of the keyboard. And I'll leave some purchase links to some really great pudding keycaps if you want to get your hands on them. Now a closer look at the keycaps reveals that most of them have a lower level functionality that can be accessed using the function key. Here are all the options that you get, quite useful to be honest, and you can pause the video right over here if you want to go through them. Now the K552 is targeted mostly towards the gamers and that's why you have 8 gaming profiles on your keyboard along with 2 custom ones that you can add yourself. When you have a profile selected only those specific keys will light up making it easy for you to press only these and not the rest. Also the keyboard comes with a 1GHz polling rate and this is ideal for gaming if you're into that but I can tell you that this is far better than any membrane keyboard in existence. Typing on the Red Dragon K552 is an absolute pleasure and someone who never used a mechanical keyboard before will really admire the way this improves your typing speed with just a little practice of touch typing. Now my typing speed was around 50 or 60 words per minute on an average and now after using this keyboard for around 7 months or so it has improved drastically to around 80 to 85 words per minute on an average with my highest being 94 words per minute. So that is quite intense, isn't it? And here is an ASMR video of me typing on this keyboard and this is how it sounds like without modding it whatsoever. Now a thing that I'd like to point out here, since this is a budget mechanical keyboard, there will be some reverb in the keyboard due to its almost hollow structure. However, this is something that can easily be accounted for if you're into modding mechanical keyboards. And even the fact that the stabilizers on the big keys like enter, spacebar, etc. are not that good and rattle a lot, that can also be addressed through modding. I mean seriously, the sheer number of modding videos for the Red Dragon K552 that are there on YouTube. Man, you can literally mod the fluff out of this keyboard and make it completely personal. There's actually an insane number of things that you can do with this keyboard like adding detachable USB-C cables, lubricating the stabilizers, adding damping and so much more that actually makes this keyboard a really good option at this price point. Now I personally read the reviews of this keyboard over at Amazon. These were both international as well as from India. 
And although I found out that there were some people who reported the fact that some of the keys were not working on their keyboard after a few days, or their keyboards were not getting recognized on their PCs altogether, I never personally faced any of these issues and I don't think all of you would be facing it as well. So you can safely go with this keyboard and you are getting a one year warranty with this keyboard so you can use that whenever you want. So my suggestion to you guys will be to use this keyboard like a normal person and don't be like the truck drivers that you see on the Indian highways and you will get the most out of your keyboard any day, trust me. Alright, so what are my final thoughts with the K552 Rainbow from Red Dragon? Well, honestly, it's actually a very good keyboard and worth every bit of your hard-earned money. It's quite heavy, let me keep it to the side. Okay, so like I was saying, this is absolutely worth every bit of your hard-earned money. And if you're in the market right now for a budget mechanical keyboard around 2000 or 2500 Indian rupees, you can blindly go for this keyboard. And since it is a keyboard that can be easily modified, you can keep this keyboard looking fresh as always while using this for a very long period of time. So if you guys want to purchase this keyboard, I leave my Amazon affiliate links down in the video description. Please use those links if you want to support this channel at zero extra cost to you. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and if you did, definitely hit that like button and please subscribe and turn on notifications because more product reviews are coming to this channel pretty soon. So this is me Rohit signing off. I'll see you guys in my next video and thank you so much for watching.